Hello, everybody. I am here with Alice, uh, one of our top teachers of 2021 on Off to Class. And today we're going to talk about ways that you can improve your teaching practices and strategies that you can incorporate in your classroom with your students. So just wanted to say hi, Alice. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm fine. It's very hot here, so I'm sweating a little bit and I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm fine. I'm very um, glad to be here. <laughs> oh, I'm, we're so glad to ha have you. Where where are you located right now, Alice? Uh, so I'm in Brazil and Ooh. I'm located in a city called Ribeirão Preto. It's in the state of Sao Paulo. Lovely, lovely. It's a very hot place. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't any, like, there, there isn't a beach anywhere near here, unfortunately. No! I was hoping you'd be near a beach. That's what we want. No, I'm not. I know. Everybody thinks Brazil, beach, but no, not in my case. Oh, no. Well, hopefully you can pop into a pool soon. Like, it <laughs> sounds like really the opposite of my experience here in Canada. It's freezing. Exactly. I'm like, I'll exactly. take any heat at this point. <laughs> So again, wanted to give you a huge congratulations for your achievement. It's you so amazing much. being a top teacher on the Off to Class platform. We have so many teachers, over 8,000 using the platform every month, and you're in the top. Wow, I'm so, it's so amazing. I was so, I was, I was ecstatic when I heard the news. I was like, wow, I have the uh, best students. Oh, <laughs> uh, so with that being said where do you get your students how do you find them do you find are you on a marketplace are you on something like italki how do you connect with them mm, well actually uh because i've started as a private student so for me what's worked best is uh word of mouth Amazing. And really and it's always been like that so um my students nowadays they range from 20 to 40s yeah, my mm. private students, because I also work in a school, but uh, privately, these are the, the ages that I teach. And then they talk to their friends, they talk to their families, and then eventually their friends and families get in touch. And that's how I build my uh, my student portfolio. <laughs> um, but I also have profiles on Instagram and Twitter and kind of funny because nowadays I see a kind of a shift like mm -hmm. I get a lot of students now because of Twitter I don't know oh. they see like oh this girl is so crazy on Twitter let me go and see how she is as a teacher <laughs> well we're definitely gonna have to link your Twitter then um, oh gosh that's dangerous <laughs> If you want to, because no, this fine. Twitter sounds pretty incredible. It's not uh, really that incredible, but <laughs> so speaking of social media, so you use social media is actually a place that you're able to get students. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Like before, it was more difficult, I think, but nowadays, I I, I see this shift. Yeah, I have LinkedIn and Instagram, but what works best for me is Twitter. I don't know nice. if it's because on Twitter you can uh, be yourself or be the person. I don't know. They they just see the way that you are. And I constantly talking about the fact that, oh, I am a teacher. I am an English teacher. And then people see that. And Amazing. Like, yeah, for me, it's really interesting. I've never tried italki. I would like mm. to. Yeah. I, I I, I personally never have myself. I was on VIP Kid, and if anyone watching, we know about the crackdown, so VIP Kid is no longer a viable option, but that's that's something also I'm, I'm interested in myself. So would you recommend that new teachers use social media or start I do. a social media account? Yeah. yeah, I do. It works really well for Brazilian teachers, Ooh. so yeah. That's great to know. And Twitter is, you, you'd you say, just be yourself. Use something like Twitter where you can actually express yourself and your personality. Yeah, and you don't have to just talk about uh, your profession. Like I, I do that, but it's not just what I do. And mm -hmm. then I think that people see it and they connect in some way. And then they go like, oh, OK, I want to know this person better. She exactly. Seems nice and she seems like a good teacher. So Absolutely. So um, 
Well, with that being said, you're here because your students have given you so many five star ratings, perfect ratings. What That's do you do to keep your right. students so happy? Oh, I, I was thinking about this question. Uh, I have a very strong bond with my students mm. and I always make sure to take into consideration uh, their needs, their personalities, mm. because for me, they're all unique. Yeah. Mm. And this is one of the reasons I like private teaching so much because mm -hmm. I can devote myself to that one student and I can help them in whatever they need to improve uh, or, or whatever it is that they want. Yeah, because they have different goals and some students, they are here to just uh, they just want to learn how to speak for traveling or some are actually they, they want a more academic approach. Mm -hmm. So I have all sorts of students. I think that's what what makes it so interesting to me is that this this differences and also like their background i always consider their background a lot especially here in brazil i don't know if in other places but there is this this trauma mm -hmm. uh, about learning english that comes mm. from from regular schools because mm. the, the english in regular schools is not it's not that it's bad it's just that it's not what it was supposed to be okay and and so they have some kind of trauma yeah, with past teachers and so I, I i also have to take those things into consideration and this is i think um th there was a student that actually told me uh oh i what i like about you is that i can talk to you about anything like Aww. any sort of subject i can talk to you about and you don't judge and you don't don't actually uh you, you never get angry i'm a very very chill patient person so Aww. well i'm getting that vibe from you as well i've had so, even prior to this conversation for anyone watching i'm, I'm loving ha talking with alice we've gotten <laughs> into it and it's been fantastic so i i can definitely see why your students have that level of comfort with you and i think that's something that a lot of teachers forget they get really wrapped up in the qualifications and this idea that everything needs to be perfect. Everything needs to be perfectly planned right before. Yeah. Of course, planning is important. No, it's Don't important. take away from that. But yeah. what, what I'm getting from you is it's also about having an, a, a genuine interest. And that comes from a genuine interaction. You can't plan that. Yeah. And this is one of the things that I've learned while teaching. It's, you can have everything really planned out, but things can completely change during class. Mm -hmm. And you have to be prepared for that as well. Mm -hmm. So just because you have a, a lesson plan, which is important, I'm not saying it's not, but you know, throughout the class, you have to feel your class. You have to mm -hmm. feel your students. See, okay, this is not really working, so let me change it, you know? Like, I, I think we need to be very flexible when we are teaching. This is really important. That's a good point. And you can usually tell with the student from body language. Yeah, exactly. And their responses, like uh, they'll be enthusiastic or even their performance will change when they're yeah. a lot more in invested. I've noticed that with my students. When they're engaged, they actually improve and excel. So true. Do you... With, so you have a lot of different types of students, it seems. Do you have a particular teaching niche? Uh, that was a very interesting question because I've never thought about it. Oh, uh, okay. Because, because my students are so different, right? Uh, right now, I have a lot of students preparing for IELTS and CAE and cool. the TOEFL. So nowadays, I think that will be my niche. Yeah but and also because i love teaching grammar so much <laughs> oh i can't wait to talk about that then <laughs> it's not what i usually hear uh, i love grammar so much i think they actually see that on me and then they're like oh i want to learn more about grammar because normally students hate grammar right yeah a lot of I, a lot of the time grammar is kind of put on the wayside because people are like eh. I personally, it's funny that you were saying that students have a bad experience learning English. I've had a bad experience learning French in the system I, here. In yeah. Canada because it's basically with grammar, it's like a 
they sort of drill it into your head. You sort of remember the conjugation charts, things like that. And essentially, that's not how you learn English. That's our, our, our language part of me. That's not how you learn a language. Or It's about communicating in real life settings or examples and then actually um, incorporating other activities. So how do you incorporate grammar then? I want to hear all uh, about it. Tell me everything. Uh, do you want to hear it now? Okay. Yeah, uh, sure. If you want to, please tell me, how do you incorporate grammar in the classroom? Um, I know that, for example, most language courses here in Brazil, they have decided that grammar was bad because okay. students hate grammar, right? Okay. So they found a way to incorporate grammar in a way that they call like uh, language functions. So they okay. incorporate grammar with what, um, for example, if we're talking about present simple, then we're talking about routines and habits, and then we're gotcha. talking about the that that's basically what's being like here for us yeah uh, however i actually like teaching grammar saying the actual name so this is a present simple this is present uh continues and this is why we use them i think it's important not just to pour like grammar into your students yeah um i think it's important to actually say okay so this is why you use that so now mm. let's use that so you can give them the structure i think it's important to give them the structure because that's sort of a guide that they go yeah. to and say oh so that's languages are not uh they have similarities but you know uh, at the end of the day they are different so they have different aspects and different ways of construction like sentence construction so it's important to show them that because Otherwise, they will always keep translating things like from Portuguese to English, for example. And sometimes it doesn't feel natural and it feels like, oh, but you are talking in Portuguese, not really in English. You know? Ah, yes. It's literally just a direct translation. So it might not, it's not going to have the same sentence structure. It's not yeah. so I get you. I hear you. Okay. And this is very common here. Yeah. Mm. Because everybody that learns a language learns by translating mm. in the beginning and i say that in the beginning it's fine but afterwards it really gets in your way of learning okay okay so but i, I feel that when i give them like for example first i actually give them the the function like uh okay so today we're going to talk about your daily habits yeah mm -hmm. and after that i give the structure nice and they, and they like to know that oh so okay so these are the rules and i said yeah these are the rules you have do does don't doesn't yeah the the s just disappears when you have a negative in an in interrogative form and i don't know i think it's because i like grammar so much that they kind of like it too <laughs> that makes a huge difference seriously I, I would want to learn with you. The, yeah, right. Again, the enthusiasm. It seems like though you might not have a particular niche, you are teaching people how to communicate and use grammar. Yeah. Potentially grammar is your niche. Like that's pretty impressive. It's very it's a very specialized thing being able to teach grammar so enthusiastically. I've met a lot of teachers with different approaches none of which I find wrong, better, whatever. But sometimes they're like, grammar is a homework aspect and that's okay. No. I, really like, I really like that you incorporate it in the classroom because it's, it's difficult to do. So how do you use off to class to teach grammar then? I really like the, I like the, the, the way that off to class is organized. Mm. And so I like the way that, for example, they, they offer just IELTS and TOEFL preparation, and then you have the grammar aspects. And so, for example, if I'm teaching them something, and then I want to delve a little bit into that particular sub, it's like, oh, okay, so now let's work on linking linking words. So mm. let's go and see something about present simple. If I see that a student is having a lot of problem with the structure, I know. So let's go back. Like I had students say, oh, I still don't understand present perfect. And that's a huge issue here in Brazil because we don't have something similar to present perfect. 
in okay. court. That's very interesting. Yeah. So for them, present present perfect is like this huge monster. <laughs> and so we go there and say, no, so let's practice. And there are so many things on off to class that I can use and I can incorporate other things, but I really like it and they like it. So that's good. So present yeah. perfect simple is a very, very useful. No, it's, it's present perfect is seriously, everybody hates present perfect. All Brazilian students hate it so much with passion so it's kind, of, it's kind of nice when i can actually uh teach them mm -hmm. and they go like ah okay now i get it and even when they don't get it they actually start using as they speak correctly and i was like oh my god you see you are using present for that's now. that's great see you're, like practice makes perfect essentially and it's exactly. sometimes if you don't if you're thinking too hard about something, you might not be able to retain it the way that you would be in a natural setting. And it seems like you create a really natural setting for these students so that A, they can practice and feel comfortable, but also it seems like they share with you and create that bond. So how many students do you have? Do you teach them independent, like um, individually or is group classes? What do you like to do? Uh, I teach individually. I prefer it that way because that was actually how I improved my English. Ah. When I, yeah. So I know it's not the ideal in terms of money, <laughs> but it's still what I prefer. So I prefer uh, teaching individually. I have groups, but mm -hmm. I have groups at the school that I that I that I teach. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. I like it too. Yeah. I think I think there are different um, different personalities require mm -hmm. different classes so there are students that really enjoy being a group and they grow by being a group but there are some students that they really really soar by being alone in studying just yeah. me and them because then they yeah. can really um students are really afraid of speaking yeah they like are. they're really really afraid they're afraid of making mistakes they are afraid of saying something that is really offensive mm. and so if it's just me and them they feel at ease to actually make mistakes because i'm yeah. not going to judge them and i'm going to just say okay so that's not exactly how people say it or that's not exactly like it doesn't sound so naturally so you know so that that's how i do it that's that's very good to know i personally i like learning in, individually um I've, I've i study spanish but when you're in a group, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, <laughs> right? It, it was the same with me. <laughs> like... It's hard. Exactly. And with that being said, what are your thoughts on error correction? Do you think it's best to interrupt your student or tell them after the fact? You know, uh, that was a funny thing because this week I had a conversation with a student about that mm -hmm. and he was telling me, oh i would like you to correct me more i'd like you to interrupt me more when i make a mistake and then i said well you see there are times like specific times that you can correct your student and for example if they are speaking i don't think that's the the correct time to just keep interrupting them every time they make a mistake because then mm -hmm. you'll just break their their uh because imagine they're already they're already very afraid of speaking mm -hmm. right so if you just keep like, oh, sorry, uh, did you mean to say ta -na -na, ta -na -na? and then they go like, ah, yes. But then you, you break their thought, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's, you it's don't want to interrupt the focus, essentially, when they're on yeah. their train of thought, because exactly. And I think sometimes I, I like your idea of saying, oh, th did you mean to say it this way? And the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can sort of take ownership over this correction as well, which is a really interesting approach. But I know some students, they love, they're like, tell me right away what happens. But tell me right away what I'm doing wrong. Interrupt, please do it. Yeah. Whatever. And I said, no, I won't do that. If I do it, I will do it like really smoothly. Yeah. And uh, and I actually told him that, uh, okay, so I'm just going to let you speak, all right? So unless you say something really appalling, 
okay so i will do that also do you mean this 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 yeah uh but i usually do it at the end when they are speaking yeah because mm -hmm. spot, on, spot on correction it's something that it's really it's it's a it's a difficult subject right it's a touchy subject it is uh, some students really they they um they don't like it. they say that they do right but once mm -hmm. you start doing it they sort of closed down like yeah. you can't reach them anymore you know mm -hmm. because it's like, oh so everything that i'm saying is wrong and then they, they go like you know oh no so, yeah absolutely. so i say no i'm going to correct you at the end if it's absolutely necessary so i make some notes when they are speaking and then i say oh, okay so now let's highlight some things and then i say like okay so this is actually like this and that was actually like that and, and that's it unless it's grammar for example that we are actually working right now and then it's okay right like oh, yeah. okay, so it's not like this is like that but uh, while they are speaking i really don't like to interrupt them that's a really good um point too because even in english um when or learning any language if you can communicate if you can get the point across generally that's great like that's a huge feat in and of itself and i know a lot of learners are very obsessed with the idea of perfection but yeah that takes a lot of time that's, like, that's i don't great. even speak perfectly and this is my native language so it's <laughs> so important to manage those expectations as well and um, how do you do you give feedback after a lesson like in a written format or anything like that or do you use place uh, sorry assessments or the homework to do so um i usually use not not really homework i actually ask the students after a period of time like i don't mm -hmm. ask like after every class but if i see that for example that class didn't work exactly like i wanted then i ask them Okay. Or if I see that uh, a student, like this week, a student was, I, I could see it, right? Because they changed books and that was a group. Mm -hmm. And I could see that she was a little upset that she wasn't really getting uh, the point of the lesson. And, yeah. she, and I could see in her face because I know her a lot. Yeah? yeah. And then after class, I actually reached out to her and said, hey, don't worry. This is new you're going to learn don't uh don't feel anxious about it i'm going to send you more material we're going to work on that together so it's okay and then she told me that oh but i found it really difficult because it is really new and i said yeah exactly it's new so mm -hmm. it's not just something that you're going to learn like that and that was uh reporting verbs and reporting verbs oh. are kind of a big deal right it and is. then i told her like don't worry about it you'll learn and we'll learn by using it so and then she was like oh okay I, i'm i'm fine now teacher and Aww, like, <laughs> that's really sweet it's so important to reassure students do you use any um do you use the placement test the off the class placement test or i do yeah. yeah i have uh a student that actually does all of them and i feel like so happy because most students they just ditch homework yeah. Especially if they are, uh, most of my students are uh, adults. They're busy, right? yeah. So, so it's not really like I can say, oh my God, you're not doing your homework, like with teenagers. Um, but this one, he's really amazing. He does all of them and he actually enjoys it. And oh, good. That's what we want to see. Hey, yeah. <laughs> and he really likes it. I, I feel that. And I, I loved that idea of progress tests that, oh, yeah, yeah, I really loved that. That's great. How did you find off to class? I'm very curious to know, actually. I was actually thinking about it and I don't remember. I think that I was just browsing uh, on the Internet. I was browsing Google and then I, I don't know, off to class just appear and I started looking at it. It's like, oh, this is so interesting. And then I started using it. It's like, wow, the, the classes are really interesting. And then I remember that I used with one student. Uh, oh, cool. Let us test together and tell me what you think. Like, oh, smart. Do you think, yeah. Do you think it's, it's interesting? Do you think it's uh, something that I could work with? And then we did it together and said, wow, I thought it was fantastic. Just great. Yeah. 
the idea of I, I think it the the platform is so interactive and that's something that you don't have in other in other platforms i think mm -hmm. so they don't help you as much and so they enjoy uh the, this ability of being able to interact more so like they, they can actually write right mm -hmm. and on the board and they can take notes on the board if they want you and it, that's really it, it's really fun that's great i love that you tested off to class with the student i did test off to class with the student. that's so interesting but it's a really good it's a really good gauge of whether this is going to work for you and clearly it did do you use off to class in your so you teach independently but you also teach it in a school do you use off to class in the school uh i try i can't because they have their own method, right? Uh, I got you. Yes. But sometimes, you know, I just slip a little Maybe bit. Nice compliment in there. Yeah, right? yeah. When I think it's appropriate, but mostly it's just with my 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 own students. Yeah, my private students. That's really interesting. How do you? recommend that online teachers maybe try um teaching in person do you think it's a something that is worth trying if you've never done it before i think it is because it's a different dynamic mm -hmm. so yeah it's good it's, it's all about what works for you it's the yeah. same that I, that I tell my students what works best for you and actually some teachers they prefer the in-person thing mm -hmm. Uh, I actually I'm really comfortable right now teaching online. I really like it, even when I miss the in-person interaction. But I think it's it's interesting. It's interesting to have like to to, to see the way that uh, both both ways work. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely something even. I've never really taught group classes. So that's something that interests me as well. And it's, it's, there's so many avenues you can go down when you're teaching. And that's I find that very appealing. And I like that you're, you're sort of bridging both. You've got, you work independently, but you also work for school, you have groups, you have independent lessons, you have older students, you have younger students, you're, you're doing it all which is pretty amazing yeah and, and it's really interesting because you can see the differences and the similarities really well i tried working at regular schools but mm -hmm. i really disliked it so that's why i think it's important to try everything mm -hmm. because then you can see okay so this is for me this is not for me this is for me this is not like that you know so nowadays i prefer like language schools are much nicer for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and teaching individually for me is like the best thing yeah i think it's so important that teachers remember to try out these different positions and experiences because maybe online one-on-one -on -one is not for you but perhaps you're you exactly. as a teacher in a group setting with say younger children Exactly. But you never really know until you try it. And I think some people get so intimidated by maybe the first class online, you know, like, that's not for me. But even your experience online evolves and changes as well. It might give you information about what you don't like to do or what you want to do in another setting. So do you remember your first class online by any chance? I remember mine. It was so it, like I, I would I would not hire me then, but you change, right? You evolve. So it's so important to be patient and understand that you're not going to be true. a perfect teacher right away. It takes time uh, to get comfortable. That's, that's really true. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really remember my first online class, but I remember my first class and it was really, really awkward. <laughs> uh, and I was really, because when you, when you start, you don't feel you feel like you still don't know enough mm. and uh, oh and you question yourself a lot should i be teaching mm -hmm. do i know enough to be teaching this person because it's a it's a responsibility it is and, and you make mistakes and i remember that i was really afraid of my speaking skills at the time because that's the last thing that we learn right like we not not that we learn but that we master yes sort of. yes yeah and so i was kind of afraid like oh my god what is my speaking is not as great as i think it is 
yeah. But those are things that you just keep teaching and eventually things will get better and you feel more conf comfortable in the classroom, you feel more confident as well. And yeah. you feel less, less awkward. Sometimes there are still awkward moments. But... There can be awkward moments, yes. Yeah. Sometimes no matter what you do, a student yeah. is just their personality is what it is and that's okay. That's but okay, it, exactly. But I totally understand. I think it's so important for teachers to remember that it is a learning experience for you as well. You are going to pick up skills. You're going to see what works, what doesn't work for you. And you're going to learn from the student as well, because every student is different. I yeah. love that when I speak with all these, all these different teachers, um, they're getting that. Learn from your student. It's, That's true. It's That's so, so important. important. And you mentioned you ask um, their wants and their needs when you're starting with them. And that's so important as well, in addition to assessing their skill level. So I really like your approach. And before we end off, I wanted to know, do you have any highlights, teaching highlights of 2021? Anything stand out to you? Uh, 2021 was a very difficult year. And I think oh. that it was difficult for everybody, right? Because oh, of COVID yeah. and um, I think that uh, because my classes have been online for a while now. Yeah. So like, I didn't have a problem with that. My students didn't have a big issue with that. And I think it's interesting that we found new ways of teaching, right? Just using online tools. And for example, I love the fact that I, I can use off to class because it helps so much with mm -hmm. like so many things. Uh, it's so easy to navigate through the platform. So I guess I would say that the highlight of 2021 for me was actually how much uh, off to class has helped me. Aww. Class preparation and how much time I could save preparing my classes. And I could see that my students had fun and they truly really? enjoyed the lessons. Yeah. So I'm That's... really grateful for that. I'm so happy to hear that genuinely that's that's a great highlight uh, we at off to class want to make your life easier and the fact that that was a highlight of your year is it's a highlight of my day <laughs> and it was it, it really, really translates your enthusiasm because you're one of the highest rated teachers on this large platform so huge congratulations to you Alice. thank you so much Ryan. it was such a pleasure talking to you and i know that there was so much information here that is really valuable to teachers who are new, who are still, who have been in the industry for a long time. So I really appreciate you talking to me today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a I pleasure. Really humbled. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you, Alice. It was very nice to meet you. You too. Uh, let me just think. Bye.